So the second problem is number 14 in Sir Wei and Jewett, uh, chapter uh, 24, problem 14, WI. We have a particle of a certain charge that's placed in the center of a spherical shell of a certain radius. So we can draw our shell. Charge is in here. Call it Q. The shell has a radius of R. Okay. And we want to know what is the total flux through the entire surface. Again, the flux is equal to this, but it's also equal to the charge enclosed in some Gaussian surface divided by epsilon naught. So if we want to know what the charge, what the flux is through the surface, then we make our Gaussian surface simply be the surface itself. And then the flux is simply the charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught. And for me, my charge enclosed is 12.5 microcoulombs divided by epsilon naught. So we can type that in. 12.5 microcoulombs times 10 to the minus 6 divided by, and I've already stored epsilon as my variable E. Okay, so the total flux is 1.41 E6. Let's try it. Hey, that works. And then what is the flux through he any uh, hemispherical shell? So any shell like this. Okay. And any hemispherical shell that you can imagine is going to be simply half of the total flux. So we take the number divided that by 2. 7.06. E5. And then we try that. Hey, does the result uh, depend on the radius? And the answer, of course, is no, because our radius A didn't come into any of the, of the equations. But then, no matter the size of the, of the, the shell, the flux, the number of field lines is the same, whether it's a big shell or a small shell.